Just as the risen Lord Jesus offered peace and forgiveness to those who had let him down, so let us turn to God, acknowledging our sins and our failures, trusting in God's compassion and forgiveness. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God, our Creator and Redeemer. To you be glory and praise forever. From the waters of chaos you drew forth the world, and in your great love fashioned us in your image. Now through the deep waters of death, you have brought your people to new birth by raising your son to life in triumph. May Christ your light evermore dawn in our hearts as we offer you our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go towards the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship, and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, 
so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were coming along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptised? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptised him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me, and I in them, bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May I speak in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the New Testament, there are three letters by John, as well as St John's Gospel and the Book of Revelation, and they all thought to have been written by the Apostle John. The letters and Gospel are thought to have been written later on in the first century, from 70 to 90 AD. At this time, John was based in Ephesus, in Asia, that is, on the west coast of Turkey. And he was writing these letters to the early Christians in that part of the Roman Empire, telling them about Jesus Christ and making sure they were not being misinformed about Jesus and God's kingdom from his own experience of being with Jesus during his time on earth. The first letter of John that we heard about in the readings for today is that God is love. That spiritual salvation through faith in Christ is personal, relational and requires our responsiveness. From the Gospel reading, John is telling us about the seventh and last I am sayings of Christ Jesus. That is, I am the true vine. The other I am sayings in John's Gospel are I am the bread of life, I am the light of the world, I am the gate, I am the good shepherd, I am the resurrection and the life, I am the way and the truth and the life. Here in chapter 15, Jesus is the true stock of the vine, 
but he needed to be in relationship with God and in that relationship be cultivated by God. Jesus was not separate from God. The branches needed to be pruned so that the nutrients would reach the strong pruned ends to produce the best fruit. If the vines were left with straggling branches, the furthest parts would get limited nutrients. They would be weakened and break off and not retain that relationship with the stock of the vine. We need to act as a community to produce fruits for the good of this whole. Each of us has a part to play, going about our daily lives, even walking in the park, going to the shops, smiling at others and perhaps stopping for a chat. These small acts are important in our communities and are the fruits of God's creation. Our worship here at St Chad's is also important. People see us coming to church and with fewer constraints on us we can reflect on what truly means to be a worshipping community. To acknowledge the goodness of creation and be in loving care with one another. To be outward looking and not self-contained. We need and rely on one another to be part of this church and of the larger and worldwide Christian community. The Saints Paul and Peter shocked the early church by admitting Gentiles into the early Christian church. So pruning, the branches grow stronger and the sap can flow more freely to produce more grapes. What problems are there in our community that are stopping us from growing? One of the main problems that is present in the Church of England today is still racism and this is not only amongst the clergy, it can affect us all. How racist is each one of us? A little or a lot? Could you give yourself a figure out of five, one being very racist and five hardly at all? And when would you tell another that you believe them to have made a racist comment? Pruning in this Gospel passage of John equals words of judgment by God. God's grace is unearned, undeserved, favours love and spiritual enablement made available through the personal sacrifice of Christ and is enough to forgive and save us spiritually to sustain our relationship with God. Remembering the I am sayings of Jesus, particularly I am the true vine, can help each of us to remain close to Jesus. We become attuned to him and he to us. The remarkable result is that what, would, what we want will be what God wants and it will surely come to pass, so stated a hospice chaplain, Nancy Blakely. The Hebrew word shalom means wholeness, completeness and health, not just peace. And she found this an help in dealing with people in her care in the hospice. So shalom means health and means that chaplains can talk about healing when there is no hope of a cure. But there is still hope. There remains still the hope for the relief of suffering. Because Jesus warned his disciples that they had to rely on him and not to trust in their own strength. Is our own success what counts today? I'm going to plug Radio 4 again as I enjoy listening to the scientific programme on a Tuesday morning. It's called Life Scientific. And last week's episode was about the scientist Jane Clark on protein folding. But this is at a molecular level in each cell of the body. And that process of folding 
of proteins and unfolding helps us all to contract and relax our muscles. And maybe that the abnormalities in protein folding may be important when it is abnormal in brain cells and that could be a cause of Alzheimer's dementia. She believes that it's important for scientists to talk to each other, to fire off their ideas to others who are in the same field. Not exclusively, as questions can be put by others who are willing to exchange ideas. Even better when this is done over a meal and she thought refectories were a good idea where people can meet over a meal and talk to others, just like the monks did in medieval times. Only in those monasteries where they were allowed to talk to each other, not the silent ones. Eating over meals and talking with each other is important, as are face-to-face -face meetings. And hopefully with the reduction in COVID cases, more of us will be meeting face-to-face to talk about things, ideas, lifestyles that are important to us. Some people have voiced their difficulties in being able to talk about what has happened to them in the last year and what difficulties they have faced to be open with others. So we have to be careful in our replies and listen to what people want to tell us. Scientists also need to have people they rely on when their ideas don't work out and to have a support network to fall back on. Nowadays, new discoveries are made by cooperation of people in several institutes. Scientists can't go it alone. It's up to each one of us not to act alone. We need the resources of others to try and solve problems and meet challenges. This year, the Manchester Diocese is changing the deanery structure. Next month, there will be only seven deaneries and seven area deans. We have to link up to other churches and mission communities, and you'll be hearing more about this soon. Hopefully, we will be able to share expertise in these new church communities, to be able to look outwards and find greater strength and relationships so that we can exchange ideas of how to go forward in our Christian lives. It will be a time of change, but one with hope for belonging to God's kingdom. Amen.
let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. The Collect for the Fifth Sunday of Easter Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that, as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Let's be.